Hi, uh, Gary Porter here. I wanted to show you this new schematic. Uh, it's the MC33033, the MC33039. Uh, this is a Hall connector, power, ground, and the three sensors comes in and goes to both ICs. This is a speed control down here. It's a 10K pot and a little RC time thing. And uh, this is the feedback loop for the uh, closed circuit operation. So when you set the speed, it uses the Hall effects and uh, the F out of the 3039 chip uh, tells the 33 what to do with the motor as far as power. And uh, that maintains the speed. Uh, down here, we've got the, uh, just pump this down some. Got the six FETs, the top FETs, and the bottom FETs. And that's right off, this entire design is right off of the MC33 data sheet. And then over here, I've got the, uh, got the PC board layout. Now the main power comes in here and the ground splits. There's a portion of the ground plane comes over to this area, and there's an airspace. And then the ground plane here comes back, so now you've got all the heavy current is flowing this way, and then the light current is flowing this way. And uh, that's how that works. The next thing I did, I completed, the, I completed the motor, and what I found, I had to use a bolt here to tie these two pillow block supports to the vertical piece. And uh, you bring the rotor surface here, right up to this surface first without this without the uh, stator on it and make sure these two surfaces are perfect right angle and uh, then you also want to make sure that your bearing things can spin by hand here once that's all done then you can tighten down this whole environment check the bearings again make sure they spin freely and then tighten and then uh, pull the rotor out then you mount the stator in I've got it on a piece of, I mounted it to a piece of, of uh, one inch wood here that I turned on my lathe and uh, wooden lathe to fit it and I got one, two, three, four bolts that go through this vertical surface and uh, so you bolt this and I cut the bolts with a, because I can't get inside to tighten them so uh, I, I made a cut in each of the each of the bolts with the Dremel tools, so I can put a screwdriver in there to tighten these nuts up. So this is all loose, and then once you've got that, then you uh, get the these are there are four four pieces of paper here, and there are ten sheets each. And you tape these, uh, you tape them right to the rotor and bend them on the inside and then slide the rotor with all with every 90 degrees you put one of these and you slide those 10 pieces and it makes a perfect match between the the stator and the rotor as far as spacing and, uh, and once you've got that slid on then you come back over here to the other side and you tighten down all of these four bolts to hold this stator in place now everything matches now you can slide the rotor back out, take the piece of paper out, and uh, go ahead and rotate it. And it should rotate smoothly without touching. And uh, that's it. The, uh, the other thing I did, which is a little bit, was well, pretty simple really. I made a, a power connection and a ground connection on this full PC board. And I soldered in the three, uh, the three Hall effect sensors. So I've got the five wires here, power ground and Hall one, two, and three. Then I use the original, I cut the original Hall sensor off this piece of plastic, but I kept the same connections and I found that I could solder a heavy wires right to the, uh, the A, B, and C phases. And, uh, and I measured the resistance to the, uh, between A and B and uh, between A and B and, and B and C and A and C and I found that it was 12 ohms. So you take the 12 ohms and you go back over to the schematic on these uh, on these FETs and get the DC on resistance here 
and then you take that resistance and then you go up, up to the current sensing thing here and you've got uh, 0.05 to add in there. Uh, these FETs have uh, 12 milliohms and I think 6, 6 milliohms, I'm not sure, I think, or 60 milliohms. And so you add that in, so when you have like uh, a Q1 and Q6 on, that would be A and, uh, well, that would be C and A would be on. And uh, so you've got the 12 ohms and plus the millis and the 0.05 and that's it. And then on the layout here, I took the, uh, I have a board over here that I'm using just for this basic motor. I don't know if the board will run it, but uh, this is the Allegra uh, three-phase motor controller. And uh, it's got, uh, it has a microprocessor on it. And I basically took all, took their schematic and I eliminated the connections to the micro. And I'm just using the, uh, the 33033 and the 33039 on this board. And uh, you can see I modified it a little bit there. And I've got uh, speed control, uh, enable, and uh, forward reverse coming out. And th this all, this all matches up with this board right here. And I got my hall stuff, my my uh, my hall connections and uh, the motor connections and my speed control is a little pot here and the enable line is going to be going to be two switches over here so that's it. The main power can, that connects over here. I'll put a switch somehow in that power the 24 volts and ground. And uh, I looked closely at this board and uh, you can see, you can you can't see it with this camera, but there's an airspace where they show the different ground planes. I use that as an example, and then I found out that uh, I found their resistors over here near the FETs in their schematic where to put those, and that told me where to put mine. So I just basically copied their idea. And uh, well, that's it for today. Anyway, have fun and. Uh, if you need a PC board, let me know. I'm going to make a bunch of these PC boards. i got to make sure they all work first. And uh, you'll have to get your own parts, but at least you have a three-phase controller. Bye.